Hey guys, Chris here from Softworks Designs, bringing you my second tutorial of the Illustrator Bootcamp series. I'm sorry I haven't been able to upload to my channel in quite some time, but I've been incredibly busy and just have not had the time to dedicate pretty much anything to YouTube, unfortunately. But I'm back now with a um, with another with another tutorial, and in this one I'm going to show you how to basically build up custom bold letters. Now, the basis of this tutorial is actually a sports logo I did for a football team, or a proposal, I should say. Um, this is not the official mark of the team, um, I should say that. Um, and in this proposal, as you can see, is completely hand-drawn text, um, primary and secondary logos. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I did this text. Now, in the description, I'll go ahead and link... Um, to where you can download this file. This is an AI file of this is I took three letters out of the word and I put them on three different artboards for you. So you can you know you can follow along, you can practice and um, learn the technique of how I'm gonna show you. Um, I don't obviously I don't need to do the whole logo and that would take too much time anyway. So three three various you know letters with slightly different you know ways of doing things, so basically just the shapes you would use. Um, you can pretty much just. I'm probably only going to end up doing one or two of the letters. I don't, it might stretch out too long if I you know hand did all the letters. Um, but yeah, basically once you do the first letter, you'll you'll figure out it, the 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 second and third letter and so on will be the same, and you're basically just going to be picking and choosing from pre-made shapes you already made doing the first letter anyway. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to make our jig. It's going to be basically a guide that's going to um, encompass the letter, and we will not be going outside of this jig. This will make sure all letters are uniform in their size. Now, in this one, as you can see, it's not perfect. Um, there's a little slant to it. It's just basically how I was holding the... Um, the sketchbook when I was drawing and in the case of this particular logo there was no real point with with the words there was no real point in being ultra um, precise with it because I knew I was going to add stylization within Illustrator I just basically needed the letters so all the touch up would be done in Illustrator now if you need something more exact obviously you're going to want to take a little bit more time and make sure everything's ultra perfect but in this case it wasn't needed because everything, like I said, would have been um, touched up and um, added stylization to afterwards. So, after you have your jig, let me just make sure this is where I want it. You're going to have to, if you're following along with this, you're, um, with the file, you're basically just going to have to pick a decent you know, median between, because obviously you see there's a little bit of lean. Um, but yeah, that's good enough. So go ahead and you're going to want to lock it so you don't end up messing with it. And go ahead and make another layer. Now, all you, all this really is, is using circles and rectangles to build a letter, really. Now I'm going to show you some of it. So go ahead and pick your Eclipse tool and just start making it. I just kind of like starting with the edges. And let's take the stroke off the fill. And actually, before I get too ahead, make sure with your jig, you're going to want a stroke, obviously. But I like to put click stroke up here and go to the outside. That way, you know you have all of the interior to work with. Go ahead and lock that. Now. Let's turn the opacity down. I usually put it down to 30 or something. Go ahead and butt it up against here. It should snap. And you'll see intersect. Just make sure it intersects because later when we're cutting out stuff, you're going to want to make sure everything's touching the edges. Looks good. And basically, you're going to be doing stuff like this. That's all it really is, is lining up uh, shapes. Um, I tend to just copy over the shape I was last working by holding down Alt and then dragging down and then going Alt. That way it's just a little bit quicker with your workflow. You don't have to keep going over your toolbar. 
make sure it butts up, and then just um, line it up. Until you're happy with the shape, just bring it back down, copy the next one over, and so on and so forth. And you're just gonna really just do that. Let me just go ahead and do one more for the bottom. I'll do a rectangle or two, and then I'm going to actually pause the video and finish this out. Alrighty, and let me just grab a rectangle next from your rectangle tool. And like I said, since there's a bit of lean, you're gonna wanna just kinda like pick where you think looks good. Oops. So, 30% opacity, shut it up against the jig. Okay, so just get it to where you want it. Somewhere in the middle is generally how I do it. And that's good enough for here. And then in this particular kind of way I've stylized the font, the left side is a bit narrower than the right. And it's like that with all the letters. This side's always thinner than this side. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause it real quick, and I'll be right back um, when I've completed the beat. Alright, and when you're done, it should look something similar like this. As you can see, all, all the lines, all the contours are, um, you know, taken care of. Everything's basically where you want it. You're ready to move on. I'll show you what to do next. Um, before you start chipping away, um, you want to take a little piece of grayscale modern art here and hold down Alt and drag it off your artboard and make a copy of it. Just, you know, because obviously, in case you make a mistake, you still have all this. But also, as I said at the beginning of the tutorial, when you're making the other letters, you're basically just going to be picking them from you know, all these shapes that you've already done. Makes it a lot quicker. So, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight everything. And you're, you're going to go over to the custom or the shape builder tool. This is one of my favorite tools in Illustrator. Basically, what it does is it removes or adds to a particular shape. Um, everything that's highlighted. So, with everything selected, you can actually just start chipping away. Um, you're going to want to start connecting things to making it a whole shape. So, if you hold down Alt, it removes. Like, we do that. And if you don't hold anything, um, it will add to the shape. So, see if I click there, since we're going to want that curve coming out here, it will add it and it will make a shape out of it. And since we don't need this circle here anymore, since we have that curve that we wanted from it, we can go ahead and hold down Alt and remove it. And then you, know, you can combine it. I mean, you don't technically have to combine it. Really, what you can do is just get the shape, um, what you want. So basically, you know, build the letter up to the point where all the curves are taken care of. Um, and don't worry about actually connecting any of them. You can do all the connecting, like actually making all these little pieces into one whole piece in one fell swoop just using the um, Pathfinder tool. But if you want to build as you go along, which is what I tend to do since I'm already using the the, uh, the Shape Builder tool anyway, I tend to just 
you know, drag across whatever I know is completed of the letter, and it will uh, build them into shapes. Um, it's up to you. Uh, we won't need this little edge here. We won't need this interior part of the circle. We're gonna need that. We can remove that. And as you can see, the B is starting to be fleshed out. I'm going to leave the rest so I can show you the way of using the Pathfinder tool. Ah, yeah, the Pathfinder tool. Removing all the edges. Try to do as quick as possible. Oh, I'll over a here. For the sake of speeding it up, I'll just go ahead and raise that up. Normally, if you if you were to see something on your current logo, go back and correct it from the get-go so everything is ultra perfect and you know there's no little. If you're if you're you know completely anal like I am anyway, that's what I tend to do. I don't like little little things that shouldn't be there or you know little imperfections. But anyway, continue on. And that seems to be it. Let me just do one quick scan. Okay, so yeah. Looks like everything's done. Okay, so if you didn't go ahead and connect all these shapes as you were going, like I tend to do, and you wanted to use a pathfinder, this is what you would do. I don't need the jig right there. Go ahead and Oops, wrong tool. Okay, go and get your uh, selection tool. Go ahead and highlight everything. And open up um, the Pathfinder you, if you're not in the same layout as I am. I'm using layout. Ah, uh, don't tell me. Okay, that was close. For a second there, I thought uh, everything crashed on me. I'm recording and I got some other stuff running in the background, so it's kind of derping my computer right now. Anyway, you would go to over to Window, and you'd go over to Pathfinder, or you can use the uh, the shortcut Shift Control F9. Anyway, so go ahead and highlight everything, and then you can go ahead and unite and then bow. It just uh, unites everything. And there you go. There's the letter. Now, um, and it's basically the same exact um, process for all the others. I would. I'm not. I'm probably not gonna do them all because. 13 minutes, yeah, it's a bit, uh. It's a bit, uh, dragging on. So what you'll do next is you'll basically just drag the jig over, and then remember, like I said, not everything's going to line up. And that's fine. As you can see, the A wasn't as wide as the B was. Um, you'll go ahead and just make it um, be as wide as it is. So you drag it over, and you can go ahead and lock it. Oops. Lock, not hide. And then from here, you can actually just start dragging on shapes. Like I said, the left the left side was bigger than the right, so in there you can just drag over, and right there you got both those sides done. And then basically you would just use the same, you know, the same circles you did last time for using here, because you're going to want everything basically like um, all uniform in their proportions, and you'll just do that 
Let me drag the little marks are not here, but the one of the notches down here. And it's basically just like that. And you can just do that to complete the other letters. Um, and that's basically how you do it. Now, obviously, you can go ahead and make this all fancy now that you've completed it. And, you know, you can start adding color and strokes and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, just do what you want with it. Um, I hope that helped you, uh, learning how to, uh, how people, well, how to make bold letters anyway. Obviously, script type would be a little bit different, and I may do a tutorial on how to do script, uh, script lettering, but that's basically just drawing on paper and tracing it with the pen tool or using the brush if you have a, if you have a tablet. Um. But yeah, so I hope you uh, found this useful in uh, learning how to build up your own custom fonts um, using them, you know, in any kind of design situation, whether it be for a logo or, you know, generic design, uh, poster, whatnot, have you. But yeah, so if it did help you, um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, it's always uh, always like to see uh, see comments and whatnot. Um, and if you have an idea for a tutorial that you'd like to see covered, go ahead and drop a comment as well. And, you know, I can always go sift through all the comments, you know, that I get, or what should I say, uh, sift through the suggestions I get, and, you know, pick a few to do. But yeah, so this has been uh, Chris from Software Designs, and I hope you have a good day.